Um, this workshop is not just a workshop about platforms, it's a platform itself. And that's what makes it so very interesting, uh, I must say, uh, for it brings together uh, academics and experts from all these disciplines. And uh, that's the, the, the best way uh, that, uh, that, that academics works, isn't it? Uh, at least for me, it works perfectly because I heard a lot of new things and new, it offers uh, interesting new perspectives on, uh, on the concept of platforms. Because as Kuhn said, I'm a lawyer and lawyers the, uh, tend to see just the problems, all, just the negative sides of, uh, of things. And for instance, with respect to platforms, uh, there is a lot of discussion uh, on platforms in the legal literature, uh, literature and there they are uh, presented most often as a, as a, a, a disruptive monopoly, monopoly uh, so a problem for competition law, uh, as uh, invading uh, human rights, uh, and, uh, and as creating f filter bubbles and therefore a, a threat to democracy. And now I'm here and I hear that there is also some good news and in fact that uh, a lot of you have presented very interesting views, for instance, in uh, that platforms have play a, a very positive role in creating value, in stimulating innovation, uh, uh, creating new work even. Uh, so for me, this, is, uh, uh, this, plus, uh, this, uh, this workshop is a success by now. And what I would like to do is to return the favor a bit and to share my, uh, my views uh, uh, with you on uh, on platforms and uh, I, uh, so that's a long introduction I could could have kept it shorter and then now for something completely different of course so I'm going to present to you the the more legal perspective and I will focus on the problematic aspects seen primarily from a, a data protection law perspective don't worry too much, I will not go too into the details of the new European General Data Protection Regulation because that might be a bit boring for the non-lawyers here, although there are some very interesting things to say about it. I will uh, start from a, 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 a somewhat higher, a more abstract uh, level uh, in, uh, uh, in the hope that you can well, uh, relate to it more. So I uh, focus on the privacy principles uh, beneath uh, the, the data protection law. And I will contrast that with the, 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 the platform practices. And I, uh, I can uh, spoil it in a way in that there is a, a conflict here. Uh, and I'll, in the end, I will uh, uh, show some, some of the s possible solutions here. Platform practices. Well, I always use uh, uh, the, the Facebook example. Uh, today, that's may, some sort of a cliche maybe, uh, but, but still, it's a very interesting example. Um, it's free, and it always will be. For an economist, maybe that means that's another very promising business model, but as you know, probably know, it is one of the most profitable firms in the world, uh, making last year $14 billion of profit, or at least as revenues. What is the, the, the success uh, here? Well, it is advertising. It's selling advertisements, and at, uh, more than 90% of its revenue is in advertising. So Facebook is not just offering the social network service. In, in, a, in a sense, it's more uh, an advertising platform, which is uh, selling eyeballs, uh, as it's put, uh, in the sense it's selling your eyeballs, in the sense that you're uh, looking at advertising. And uh, it's very successful there. Uh, well, first of all, because people are, uh, are very active on, the, on that social platform, and because they are uh, uh, they have found a way of making advertising uh, uh, very, very effective by target, targeting it. Um, very success successful because of the, the number of, uh, of users, 2.2 million, a billion uh, monthly active users uh, 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 was the, the latest uh, figure here. Um, and they are very active, so you have a platform, a, a very uh, big platform for your, your advertising, uh, advertisements. 
And uh, all these, uh, these users, they are uh, uh, followed and uh, are, uh, um, uh, there's a lot of information collected uh, on, the, on, that, uh, on that users. If, of course, everything what is done on, uh, on Facebook is, uh, is, 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 is supervised. So every, uh, every uh, thing that is uploaded, how long people are watching a particular site, uh, what, what they are uploading, who are their friends, uh, what they like and what they don't like. What is also registered are the, the device and the location settings. So you, you uh, <coughs> uh, access uh, Facebook from a particular location that is registered as well. Uh, but that's not, 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 not everything. Uh, there are still, for instance, also third-party websites uh, is a, uh, are a, 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 a very valuable instrument for collecting information. Uh, for instance, by means of the, the, the Facebook uh, like button, every site that has such a like button, and if you, if you visit it, it sends uh, uh, that fact to the Facebook server, so Facebook knows that you uh, are accessing that website, so they have a very good idea of what other websites you are uh, visiting. And in addition, also, uh, they have uh, contracts with other data suppliers or data brokers, as they are called, Experian, for instance, and they uh, have uh, inf a lot of information on not, not the online activities of people, but the offline. So, Facebook does not have just a picture of your online behavior, but also of the offline behavior. So that's a quite complete uh, image that they have of all its users. And what can they do with it? Well, they can use it for targeting, uh, 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 for targeting their, their users with specific uh, advertisements. And they have hundreds of uh, options that, that you can choose as an advertiser uh, uh, and uh, to, to select and to specifically target uh, your advertisers for. Uh, for instance, um, uh, politics, uh, th that much we know now uh, very, very well because, of course, the Cambridge and analytics scandals, because it does not just know whether it's, uh, for US uh, users whether someone is a, might be a Republican or a Demo Democrat, but also whether you are likely to engage in politics, for instance. Oh, that's the, the very interesting, of course, if you are in a, a political campaign. But also more, f far more personal or private uh, details. Uh, where, oh, go back. Um, uh, for instance, uh, relating to your relationships, whether you are interested in men or women, uh, what is your relationship status, whether you are single or, or, or married, but even if your relation, as you can see, is, is complicated uh, or, any, or, or you have an open relationship, whatever that means. Uh, so that is quite detailed. And also, for instance, interesting here is ethnic affinity. Um, um, which so it, it doesn't say we uh, we collect uh, racial data. Of course, if they would do that, that would be a, a clear violation of uh, uh, of privacy principles. But uh, they say that there is ethnic affinity, so they don't directly uh, collect information on someone's race. But the uh, by collecting uh, information on what what a person. Uh, likes, for instance, what, what uh, it has a very close relationship with someone's race. So up to 90% you can predict on some, if you just look at someone's likes, uh, you can predict what race it is. And that's what ethnic affinity is about. And for instance, this uh, opens the, the possibility to exclude per, uh, particular groups from your advertisements and thus, of course, raise, it raises issues of discrimination. Um, Facebook is the, maybe the best example here, uh, but uh, if you look at the other platforms, you could see that similar mechanisms uh, work. Of course, Google works uh, basically the same way, but also in, in Uber, in Uber uh, although that there it works a bit differently, but still 
uh, collecting data about what happens on the platform is an essential uh, uh, feature of the success of, of Uber there. And there's an, also there an inherent drive of, uh, to collect more and more information because that makes what makes the service better. For instance, with respect to, to Uber, uh, one of its goals is to minimize the waiting times for both the drivers and the users for, for its customers. Uh, well, that works better if you know more about those users. For instance, if you know whether they are going to, uh, to need a cap in a, in, a, in a certain period of time. And so recently, uh, uh, Uber announced that they also want to have access to uh, uh, the calendars of, the, of, of, its, of its customers, because then you know uh, up front whether they will need a, a cap or not. So also there, you will see that um, as, uh, as, as Martin has pointed out, data is the new oil, and f certainly for these, uh, for these platforms, it is the, uh, uh, um, uh, is, is the essential uh, feature, I, I suppose, for their success. So I, I, I also was a bit surprised that we heard the example of the, uh, of the crowdsourcing uh, company that at least publicly said it wasn't using it's, it's data, uh, and uh, m maybe, maybe it's true, and uh, because they don't, don't have the time, but uh, probably they, they, they would do a far better job if they, if they would use that data. Yeah. Or maybe, and that's, that's the positive side, maybe ju they just uh, want to be uh, in compliance with privacy law. That could be also the issue. Um, privacy principles. As said, I won't go into detail with all the rules of the GDPR, the General, General Data Protection Regulation, but uh, they, the, the, the General Data Protection Regulation uh, of Europe, uh, which is the, the new G G G GDPR, but also the, the data protection regu uh, rules that we have now, they are based on uh, a number of principles uh, which have been formulated in the 1980s, what, which are actually still valid. Um, and uh, I, I focus on these three, uh, which are one of the three central principles here. Data minimization, the idea that, uh, that you should minimize the, the collection and use of, of data, of personal data. Purpose lim limitation, meaning you must specify for what purposes you, uh, you collect data and then uh, um, uh, uh, only use those data for uh, purposes that are compatible with that specified purpose. And individual per uh, participation, meaning that you must involve the uh, individual in the, uh, uh, in, in the data uh, processing activities, for instance, give him, uh, pro providing information on, the, uh, on what is happening with the data, and also um, giving a right to, uh, 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 to access uh, data and uh, requiring consen consent. Well, so let's look at this uh, first uh, principle, data minimization, so that is a pr principle not more than necessary, or in other words, less is more, and what would be the practice of the, the platforms here? It's the opposite, right? If data maximization, and it's and in a way, and oh, the more the better. And in a way, it's true. For um, for instance, if you look at targeted advertising, maybe you've all had this uh, you, you, uh, this experience that you have booked a flight uh, on the internet, and then after you have done so, every, at every site that you visit afterwards, you see. The, the airline advertisements. And if there is one group which you don't want to target, I would say, uh, uh, with, with your advertisement, it is the, the group that has just booked the flight. So it, in, in a sense, it is an example of, 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 of the problem that, that, that this, this company has not enough data. And so that there is, an, in other words, there's an inherent drive that, that it really works better if you have more data in general, and in particular because of the developing technologies that, well, in the past maybe it may have been difficult to really do something useful with all those data, but with, with, the, uh, with developments in, in the field of artificial intelligence, the, it opens all new possibilities. 
So here, so second principle, there's the principle that you first must specify what your purpose is and then collect the, uh, the, the data which are relevant to that specific purpose. And what is the, the platform practice there? First collect, then select. Uh, and there the idea is that just, uh, well, you, you don't know upfront what you could use per uh, data for. And um, in particular that had uh, 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 new tools, uh, they can find new correlations between data, which, wasn't, which um, even the researchers didn't ex expect. So what you want is, as, as much data as you want, and then you find out what, for what, person, what purpose it might be, might be relevant. Um, a well-known example, maybe you all know this one, is the, is the target example. Um, uh, it, it worked this way that you had a, the, the company of Target, which is basically a, a large uh, supermarket, US supermarket, and it had uh, two types of data. It, it, <coughs> It, it had lists of baby showers, so it's a bit, bit similar as you have uh, uh, as, as you have in the in, in the Netherlands, for instance, uh, with marriages. And you have a marriage list which you can drop at a at a, at, 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 at the Bayekorp, for instance. And then you uh, hey, there's the list of pre presents that your uh, family and friends can select one from. Well, the same thing was here for uh, for baby showers. So it had a list uh, with those. Uh, with, with people, uh, so, so uh, uh, women who were pregnant and were expecting and they, and, and they had a baby shower list. Now, Target could use that information and combine it with, all, with the shopping history of these women. And then they got a, an interesting profile uh, showing them um, at what stage uh, pregnant women are buying what types of products. And working that way around, they could, uh, could get a, a, a profile of, of when, when, when women are pregnant or not. And the story goes that uh, the way this was, uh, became transparent was that uh, a father uh, went to the shop uh, angry that his daughter, his young daughter, was getting all these advertisements uh, relating to uh, pregnancy uh, issues and babies, and they said, why, why are you sending my daughter this? Well, because we, we, we expect that she is uh, she's pregnant, and she was. That was the story. Um, and that was because, well, for instance, one of the things that was on the list that at a particular moment, uh, a product that is often uh, 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 bought is, the, uh, is, is soap without the sand in it. So then, well, that's it. Okay. Okay, uh, the, the last principle, uh, individual par participation. So there the idea is that you have to involve the individual. Uh, the idea is informational self-determination, that the individual must decide what happens with his, uh, his data and what is the practice there. <laughs> the, the, the practice is, all, is, is, a bit, is, is, is take it or leave it. Eh? For, for instance, with a service such as Facebook, you, uh, you, you, uh, if you enter it, and uh, you have to accept the privacy policy as it is, and if you don't like it, okay, but don't use our service. Well, that's not the idea of informational self-determination, and even if there's to some extent some individual participation, it is uh, uh, that, that you give with your, your privacy away with one click, and that's it. So um, there is a clash between the privacy principles and the platform practices, and uh, lawyers are thinking about solutions here. And uh, well, ex uh, of course you can say, well, if the the practices are not in conformity with the uh, the principles, we should ch change the principles. But uh, let's assume that we don't want to do that, but do it the other way around and keep the principles and change the practices. Well, how could we do that? Well, the, the classic uh, idea is that um, if, from, a, from a legal perspective, uh, the, the European uh, ideas uh, to, uh, to strengthen, uh, in particular, public enforcement uh, of the rules, 
in the US. Idea at least traditionally was, well, it is a market problem and we should uh, um, let the market uh, function better in that respect. Private enforcement is also a possibility uh, in the sense that you enable uh, people to uh, go to, the, to, to court, for instance, themselves and to enforce it. But there, there is the problem that uh, privacy usually is a rather, if you look at it per individual, that the impact is rather low. So that doesn't work if you, uh, the, the, the in, and the impact is too low if you want individuals to go to court for it. And it doesn't happen. I'm a judge and I, I, I rarely see privacy cases um, because of this. Because, and I sometimes ask, uh, but the, well, you don't go to court because the, the financial implications are so, so much. Um, a possible solution there is that you combine uh, actions and that, uh, um, and you see uh, movements in that direction that are uh, foundations, for instance, that are uh, going to court as, as a collective. Uh, public enforcement there, the problem was that we had an understaffed regulator in the Netherlands. It had 70 persons working there and they had to supervise the entire public and the entire private sector with 70 persons. Well, that's, of course, you can't do that. And another problem is that you have a, this is a global problem. Uh, companies like Facebook and, uh, and Google, uh, well, what can you do as a, as a Dutch regulator? Well, of course, the, 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 the easy solution for an understaffed regulator is more staff, and that is what is happening. It has doubled uh, this year, but still 140, 140 persons is, is, is not enough. Uh, global practices, one solution could be their international harmonization cooperation, and the GDPR, which I mentioned, is one of those examples of what is happening. It is an, uh, an attempt to harmonize, uh, uh, at least across the European uh, countries, uh, the, 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 the rules and also the enforcement of it. And also, we shouldn't forget, also not in, in, uh, in, uh, in Europe, that there is a, a role for the, for the market here, although, of course, there is a problem that the, the platforms tend to be monopolies or at least have a, a dominant position, and that, on the other hand, that the consumers, they often lack the power and the, the bargaining power and the, and the knowledge but there may be competition law and consumer law may step in. Uh, and well, to end, uh, this is actually something that is happening. For instance, the, the German uh, competition law regulator uh, recently uh, has initiated proceedings against Facebook because it was uh, violating basically basic, basic privacy rules, so, so to speak. So there you can see uh, that there is, in, in fact, uh, a combination of uh, various fields of law that are used to, uh, to tackle this problem. So, thank you very much, and I'm uh, happy to hear your questions. Mm -hmm.